the story blows up, man. Funkmaster Flex starts tweeting about it. Waka Flocka starts tweeting about it. Even T-Pain did a Facebook post on it. The Breakfast Club are talking about it. The record does like a million plays in like the next five days. It goes Whoa. extremely viral. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it was everywhere. And then it, that led on... Shout out to Dave because he was onto Guinness because Guinness at first, they was a little bit, I don't think they wanted to let Eminem's record go because it's quite cool to have Eminem in the Guinness Book of World yeah, Records. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, but they, they, they was sort of finding a way to like log it out. But Dave was persistent, man. He was on the phone to them talking to his contact there the whole time to push it through. And in the end, it, it got so much heat on it. People were talking about it so much. It's all over the internet. They had to give me the record, man. The world record, you know what I'm saying? They had to do it. And it still stands to this day. (laughs) It still stands. World record. We're dealing (laughs) in world record holders in here. This ain't your normal fucking conversation. Tell him, Kelly. Fuck yeah. Killer Keller official com. <laughs> You need the Kellervision app. 24-7 mini documentaries, podcasts, live shows, DJ live streams, top five, subscription packages, plus products for all your podcasts and street culture sports. Download it from the App Store for free today. Beatbox created. Killer Keller. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Keller podcast. I don't know why I do it. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller podcast, live and direct, central Jeez. London, or as central as you need to be. It's a great pleasure. 450 God knows how many episodes and serves you all right for putting up with it. <laughs> but anyone that's in street culture, you know what time it is. Um, big shout out to our sponsors, Hodder Warriors crew over at the Crypto Moon Boys Hideout. That's some NFT business for you. Big shout out to all the sharers and carers. If you've got the app, Television, you know what you do. It's uh, the spreading of mixes, mini docs, big docs, podcasts, and... Uh, yeah, and all that good stuff. Free download, iPhone, Android. Oh, man, you've done this before, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you've got the spill on lock, boy. <laughs> Just roll it out. Yeah. <laughs> well, as you can hear, the voice to my right, your left, <laughs> is by no means the average. My brother has been doing this from his birth inception, and I'm not even joking. I know, <laughs> I know this man well enough and long enough to have the greatest of understandings that when it comes to lyricism and emceeing, he is an absolute well-oiled, built machine. It's what he does. He gets up in the morning and sleeps, eats, sleeps and shits emceeing. <laughs> the whole thing. <laughs> The dictionary of everything you need to know about hip hop and drum and bass. The man alongside the S A S A S A S, and of course Roadblock. It's yes. the yes, undisputed my champion, Louis. Harry Shaw inside the place. That could be the best intro I've ever had. <laughs> Rich, <laughs> it, could, it could well be richly fucking deserved. It man. could be. It could well be, man. But it's good to be here again, man. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. like it's overdue. <laughs> we need to come back and do another one. You need to keep this rolling, man. Because obviously I'm a fan. I watch all the shows. Oh, you know, and obviously we've been doing our thing with Roadblock now, which we can touch on today, man. Oh, so yeah. there's 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 a lot going on, man. Dude, this is like a double whammy. Yeah. The initial idea was, well, we need to talk about Mike Masters. Hell, Mike wow. Masters, yes. And of course, there is the emergence of our project, which without getting too self-absorbed, <laughs> <laughs> is fucking brutal. It is, it is, man. We've been in the lab, you know, we, we didn't rush that Roadblock thing, you know what I mean? We took our time with it because, you know, when you're getting Killer Keller, Harry Shotter and Prime Cuts to come together for a project that project has to come out because and it has to be of a certain level mm. do you know what i mean of a yeah. certain standard because eyes will be on that project mm. and you know like we've all done our thing respectively in our own scenes and mm. you know you're talking about a dmc four times world champion mm. a scratch pervert look at all the stuff you've done you know myself it's been it's been a long journey for all of us and we've all got accolades so and we've all got fan bases so we needed to make sure that shit was super tight super tight. before it went to the public man and now we're at a level where like we're getting together the stuff we're creating in the lab, man, is just, is mad. He's <laughs> mad. And I, I'm a man who loves live, isn't it? Mm. I, love, I love being in the studio, but live is where I excel, man. And, it, and bringing all those skill sets together mm. of yourself, me, and Prime Cuts, it just creates something explosive. You know, some of the best bits for the journey into this whole project, um, October is when we started mm. coming up with the inception of some ideas mm. and every so often there'd be one person. I mean, we kept it closed doors. When the studio yeah. light was on, no one coming in. Yeah. We had a couple of photographers. Yeah, we had yeah. a few people ballooning around. And dude, the, the, the initial response was like, whoa, well, we thought it was good. But mm. these guys, their response, that like just, just being random, so like passing through. Yeah. They were, they were genuinely, I, I didn't realise how much like, 
how much we were putting in terms of new yeah guts and bits yeah into i mean cuz cuz what it is the the stakes is high man like dayla said and it's like you know what we're trying to do is we're trying to combine all these skill sets and push our individual mm. skill sets higher as a collective mm. but we also want to rock the party yeah. it's not like we're True. doing some kind of jazz avant-garde you know stuff that people are not going to get you're going to get it but there's going to be skill sets layered within that mm. from what you're doing with the beatbox from what prime is doing with recreating samples obviously the scratch element mm. obviously the, all styles of mc because you know people they call me the bruce lee of, of mc because i love all styles and all tempos For so real. from the drum and bass to the double time to the grime even house was, we got we got, we got I know, beats, I know. <laughs> trust me he runs through I mean there's, <laughs> but there's also a real thought and I know this comes from you as an MC there's a real thought and appreciation to what the listener is checking there's some moments within the set mm. you know we've got we've got a template you understand it but we do freestyle and weave our way throughout this template yeah that template it was really important to you to get across the idea of well, no we're, we're not taking away the original verse of anything mm. what you do what we're doing is adding elements that give it almost like a, a roadblock block or authenticity yes exactly that and putting our own UK twist on things as well do you mm. know what I'm saying that only we could do coming from here. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Because we're all we're all massive fans of hip hop. You know that's that's where our journey mm. for me started. Obviously yourself, Prime as well, man. But we've also been influenced by all the other elements and all the other genres from jungle to drum and bass to garage to mm. grime. And we we encompass all that in the set and bring it together mm. in a way that it's just going to be just you know from from a crowd perspective. I can just I, I do that sometimes when I listen to music and mm. when I think about our set. I think that imagine if I was in that crowd. Oh, no, dude, me too. And and, and my, I'm not going to let it off what we're doing. But say my man mixes that with that mm. and. And it's like, wow, and it just works. Because mm. mm. that's what Prime cuts, man. He blows me away because mm. he'll, have a, he'll, have a, he'll have an idea. We'll be working. He'll have an idea and he'll go, right, hopefully this works. Give me a minute. And he'll, <laughs> he'll, think, he'll think for two minutes. And then he'll just execute this absolute piece of genius. Yeah. And me and you just be going mad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And that's, yeah. like, that's where it's all vibes. And that's, that's, that, the best thing comes out of getting in a room and, you know, working off each other and mm. getting those vibes. And, and that's what we've created. And that's what I can't wait to bring to the stage. Mm. You know what I mean? Deconstructing it, songs from their original versions into almost like remixes live in a roadblock way. Yeah. It kind of suggests, I start, dare I say it, the idea of sound system mm. from the you know late sixties, early seventies, mm. um, and you know we're in the northwest, by the way, which houses some of the most iconic sound systems. Yeah. But the idea of moving that idea forward, yeah, moving it with this in mind, the the, mm. the instrumentation of what street culture, hip hop, drum and bass is yep. is, is known for. Yeah, man. <gasps> yeah, it's exciting times. It's exciting times when you can take, for instance, this video is out there, so you can take the melody of Mr. Happy mm. by Hazard mm. and then rip out the drums due to the Serato, the new stems technology. Mm. You're doing the drums then I'm and I'm bossing the lyrics on top of that. That's a whole new thing, man. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and and we can just there's so much more we can do. And there's you know we're going to be getting together a lot and trying to come up with innovative new things and really really the creative yeah. process excites me, man, because yeah. it's limitless where we can take it, man. Yeah. And if you think we're joking, this is like going to be the third time in this week we're going to be meeting up. This has yeah. been quite a constant. Yeah, I mean, and I've really got to know you, and it's been yeah. a real fun pleasure. I tell the story all the time of. And I do, I do. I've probably told it um, God, uh, half a dozen times on the <laughs> podcast of when I first ever discovered you in Represent Magazine. Ah, uh, yeah, classic shit. Man, for me, <laughs> seeing you, they're the same age as me, mm. but really the visual embodiment of that thing that I loved. Yeah. Knowing that you were a rapper as well and you were in my favourite magazine. Yeah, that yeah. That fucking blew my mind. Bro. Yeah, like, man. People don't realise that, okay, you've come from drum and bass, but let's start from the beginning. Yeah. Because you really did live and breathe it from the very yeah, beginning. Yeah, man. From from literally from the age of six, when I first heard someone rap, I didn't do. I haven't done anything else. <laughs> I have literally loved, studied the culture, embraced the culture, learnt so much. You know, from being a fan and like getting five pound off my nan and running up the record shop that was like selling import albums <laughs> and getting up on my KRS and my Public Enemy, and then obviously later on, nineties rap was probably my favourite era. Do you know what I mean? From your Black Moons and and then and then hearing Jungle and like hearing like all this amazing music coming out and hearing Cool FM and being like, whoa, I love this energy because I've always liked fast spitting. Mm -hmm. I've always Last fast spitting, whether it's Fush Nickens or Twister or Buster, oh. I've always loved that. So mm. when I heard Skibber and Shabber, I was like, "What?" Because oh. I love Jungle anyway. Yeah, but when man. I heard them man doing what they was doing, get it? I was just like, "Right, I want to do that." Two, <laughs> two times freestyle. Oh, big up debt. Oh, that that record. You know what I loved most about it? Mm. They 
the UK scene weren't sure about it. Right. But the ones that knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, now that, that is, is progress. To me, that is like, that is like, that's something that Skibber really pioneered, the double timing on hip hop. If you listen mm. to like the Too Fast, Too Ferocious mixtape that he did, and mm. that's available on YouTube and stuff like that. He was really on jumping on those like, say Diplomats or DMX beats and just running that double time pattern on it. And it really worked, man. It resonated with a lot of people because sometimes, you know, we love American hip hop, obviously, but sometimes you can't relate to the story as much, oh, but you no, love the right. beats. So you put a UK MC on those kind of beats with more our style of MCing, then yet again, that's a mad combo, man. Do you know what I mean? Mad combo. Yeah. And uniquely British. Oh, uniquely, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rest in peace, Skibbity. Of course, of course, man. Last time we was here, obviously, <laughs> you know, it was me, you and Skibs. You had your beers that you... <laughs> if you don't know about Keller's beers, man, don't, don't let him give you... I mean, I'm all right. I drink, I drink super strength beer anyway, but... Yeah, Skib, yeah, yeah, hold Skib, on. Skibber was waved, man. And shout I'll just say, Skibs, shout out to Skibs, and I just might add, yes, he... The thing is with Harry is he doesn't get drunk. Try it. The man doesn't ever get drunk. He doesn't get a hangover. I definitely don't get a hangover. I've had about three hangovers in the last three years, and that's by that's by being silly and doing three nights in a row and that. Do you know what I mean? Even me and Prime Cup. <laughs> How's our own ailments in the morning? Yeah. You know, they've always just run a 10k around a block, you know what I mean? Yeah, man, you know yeah. how it goes, brother. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Yeah, that was a, a golden era for the podcast, and um, mm. I, I, I do recall. Um, a lot of the emphasis, actually, for that particular episode was was on the drum and bass side of things. And yeah. S A S A S. Say that correctly. For the yeah. um, uh, it's morphed and moved. I mean, obviously, it's the parting um, of uh, of Skibber um, and Storming, Storming man. as well. Yeah, man. yeah, yeah. Simply Storming. Um, this 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 cruise had quite a, a shell shocking. Yeah. Over the over its time, hasn't it? Totally, man. Totally. To to lose Storming was like. You know, it was it was mad. Like we built the foundations of SASAS, you know, with some great producers and DJs, Fantasy and Mackie G. But then like the chemistry that we built between me, Storming, Shabba and Skibber and the friendship and bonds we built was mad because obviously I was, me and Skibber were mad tight from years from when we made hip hop together in his studio in Neasden. And then we went to Uncontrollables with Funster and Rough Stuff. So me and Skibber have been working for years. Since 2001, me and Skibber have been working. That's how long me and Skibber have been in studio, writing bars together, working together. Like I said, the other day, there was, there's never been a week or when I haven't spoke to Skib, I got on the phone, you know, until mm. his, his, his untimely passing, do you know what I'm saying? So that was mad. But then you had this um, storming energy coming in as well. And storming comes from the grime scene. Mm. And his, his energy on stage, man, it was just unparalleled. That guy, you know, he was a force to be reckoned with. I used to, like, I used to look at him and be like, wow, I need to up my performance levels wow. because he is inspiring me. You can't be standing still next to Storm. And his, mm. his, his movement on stage is just is, is incredible, man. Mm. So that inspired my performance levels to go up. I became great friends still to this day with Shabba off the back of it. You know what I mean? We, mm. we're, we're proper friends. We, like, we connected as mates and there was never no ego either. That was the one thing that I used to, it's bugged me out sometimes because we we've been doing this 10 years now as a, as a unit. And we never had those issues that often arise in other groups mm. and other crews. And mm. we just never had that, man. So, why do you, you think that is? Why, why do you think that is? I think there was such a mutual respect for each other and a love for each other and a bond that was built from going on, you know, big tours. I mean, we've done some stuff, man. SASS, when I think about it, we've done your Glastonbury's. We've mm. done huge festivals in Europe where we was the only drum and bass act on the lineup. Mm. The rest is house and electro and dubstep and stuff. And we're going on there. And sometimes I used to say like, is this going to work? And it did. Mm -hmm. We mm. never went anywhere but it didn't translate to the audience. And um, that's what was great about SASS as well because there's always a stigma attached to the MC inside of drum and bass and everything mm. else because over the years, maybe there haven't been some good MCs or there's, you know, some MCs haven't really got bars and all this kind of stuff. But we would go into places, the Lion's Den, and convert people, man. Mm. We, I remember when we first did Creamfields, we was the only drum and bass at that point on that lineup. And we went in there and I said, right, they're playing bass line. How are they going to like react to this? There's no mm. MCs on the mic. That was the time when we was all together. We went up there, we killed it. And that's what we did everywhere we went, man. God, I and um, that. yeah, and that, that bond, I think we just, we all bonded and we all lifted each other up, man. Do you know what I'm saying? We all like, if a, if a man was down, we'd lift that man up. If a man, if a man needed to talk about something, we'd talk about it. We had a, we had a real sort of intimate bond between the guys. Do you know what I'm saying? So when we lost Storming, you know, it, it was, bro, it's heartbreaking, man. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. To see, I, to see him, I remember the last time I saw him, I just knew, do you know what I'm saying? So to lose him was just so, it affected us so much as a group. Mm. But then, you know, and we knew, we knew Storming was ill, so we, we had time to sort of process it and we kind of knew it was coming from what we heard from the doctors and everything else, man. It was so sad, but yeah. with Skibber, it was a shock. Mm. It was an absolute shock, do you know what I'm saying? A shock to the system when I got that call. 
because um, the night before, no one could get hold of him. So the agent, we share the same agent, he asked me to go and do his Bristol booking. Uh-huh. I said, why Skipper turns up? Like, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. here doing his yeah. set. He goes, you're going to have to go down. And I was thinking, all right, well, just, if he does come, I'll just like say, cool, Skips, the halves of the money yeah, or whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. isn't it, brother? You know what I mean? Like, but he, he didn't come. I'd done that set. And then the next day, I remember speaking to Fantasy and thinking, I'm thinking, this ain't right. Skipper doesn't miss bookings, man. No. He doesn't miss bookings. This guy has his career of, of going out and doing shows and everything else. And then, you know, his, you know, his brother went round there and we got we got the sad news, man. So it was it was an absolute shell shock. And Huge. for the group, we we was like, we didn't know how to process it at first. We needed time, man. Just mm. the time is the, is the maddest thing. I walked around in a daze for about a week, just couldn't work out, mm. work out what had happened, man. And it was like... And then we had to deal with a lot of stuff to do with like the, the funeral and all that sort of thing. You have to go through this process, man. And um, one thing coming out the other side of it now is like what I want to do and what Shabba and Fance and the guys want to do is like really carry out his wishes. Yeah. Because before he passed, he was championing the next generation of MCs and producers and DJs in drum and bass. He was doing a thing in lockdown called Breakfast with Skibbities. So I'd go on his Facebook. <laughs> I watched that. Mate, I watched that. It kept a lot of people going through the lockdown because yeah. it was like, you know, he'd get the mix- mixes and he'd just vibe out doing his mm. mad faces and all mm. that. Do you know what I mean? And, and it, was, it gave a lot of kids hope that like, rah, Skibber likes my shit. Skibber's promoting Banging me. that, yeah. And Skibber was saying to us before... He passed, he was like, we need to start bringing in the youngers into the fold, man. I know it's SASAS and it's Shabba, Storming, Skibba, mm. but we've, we've almost outgrown the names. We got together yeah. with the names, it's spelling out that, but the brand has outgrown that. We need it's to bring seismic. in some youngers. Yeah. So, you know, after we had all that time to sort of process what happened and everything else, we thought, where are we going to take this now? And it, it was said between, between the guys that we really want to start promoting new talent within the brand. Mm. Um, and also showing love to the past. So we've been doing these past, present and future showcases. Mm. For instance, we get Top Cat out to come and blaze up all these classics, all the jungle tunes. And then we bring as out someone do, like Wiser. As you do. Yeah, yeah, and a man like Top Cat. And then we bring out someone like Wiser. And it's just, and, and, and that energy and being around the youngers has grown so much now into, into the Mike Masters thing. Which is it, which has evolved as Mike Masters. And yeah. whilst doing this as well, and this is something that we're a huge advocate over here on, yeah. is you did podcast. The, yes. The, who is it? Is it weekly? It's like, yeah, it comes out every week, man. It comes out every week, yeah. How's that, how's that been for, as, a, as a form of therapy, I guess? And, and also a, a call to arms at the same time. Yeah, I'll tell you what it was with the podcast. We, there were certain things being said, and will the group carry on, and what are the guys going to do, and how do the guys feel about this and about that in the aftermath of all the, like you say, mm. the turmoil we've had to go through, man, mm. and the heartbreak we've had to go through. We needed to answer some questions. So initially, it was just for us to have a voice to get this stuff out there, Mm. what's going on with the MC culture and all this kind of thing. It was initially that, but when we did it, we got such a great response and Mm. we enjoyed it. Mm. Mm. And it was therapeutic, like you said, to talk about these things, to get them out there and and spell these things out to the public sometimes they might not be getting or might not understand. Mm. So we was like, let's just keep doing it, man. And we we go out and the ravers enjoy it. You know what I mean? Mm. People people like sort of hearing our views on stuff. There's a lot of jokes on there as well, Mm. man. Laughter is what it's all about. It's like, I think the podcast is, I always get this wrong. Life, love and laughter. I hope hope I'm right, fantasy. (laughs) But yeah, yeah, no doubt. I got my just juice. I'm still repping, but yeah, yeah. (laughs) I always have that on the podcast. But yeah, Um, so so yeah, we just really started enjoying it, man. It's like you know me, I'm motor mouth. I Mm. talk all day about Mm. my my passions, which is mainly music. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So for us to get around a table and talk, and sometimes we just let off the maddest tour stories and stuff. And you know, like you said, it's it's good to talk, man. And it's a lot of jokes and a lot of love, love, and the ravers are really feeling it, man. So look at everyone supporting that. There's a few questions I've got. Yeah. Um, and I think a lot of it, if I'm really honest with you, derives from lyrical content that you delivered more recently on a verse I heard of yours. Mm. Um, I won't get into that and what it was specifically, <laughs> but what makes you tick? Like, what's the mechanics of of Harry Shaw? Yeah, there's... Not outside the music. Yeah, I'm talking. Yeah. I'm talking. You, you, you're. Where does that drive come from? Yeah, man. I've all since I was young. I've always had that drive, man, I've, and I've always loved to perform. Like, I don't think I've ever said this in an interview, but when I was, when I was a kid, I used to do impressions of people. Yeah. I'm talking when I was four or five. I used to see people on the telly and I'd study their voice and I'd do impressions of them and, and make jokes up about them and stuff like that. And I, would, and I would then ask my family to all sit down and let me do my impressions of these guys to you. Right, so I always loved to perform. And then I started even, I used to dance, you know. <laughs> don't, get me, don't, don't get me started on the running, man. Then I used to do dance routines, right? Stop it. No, no doubt, bro. Incredible. No, no, I, don't, I, don't, I don't dance as much like these days. I'm more of a head nod guy, yeah. but yeah. <laughs> so I was doing that from a very young age. And then when I heard someone rap, I was just like, rewind, rewind, rewind. Played it over and over and over. 
And I was just like, I need to be, I want to be doing that. Do so, you know how significant this bit of information is? Yeah. That's crazy. Mm. So you were always a performance-driven person. Pretty much, since, like, since four or five, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And emulating things to, 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 a, to the wire. Yeah, to comedic effect, like just, just studying the way someone would talk. And like, if it was like, let's just say Margaret Thatcher, yeah. she had a very unique voice. If I yeah. heard her on the telly, I would try and emulate the voice and do impressions. <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like all, all kinds of stuff, man. David Bellamy was one of my favourites. Remember Come that guy? On. <laughs> Come on, a show on our age now, but yeah, big up the David Bellamy crew. You know yeah, how old yeah. you are. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying, bro? Like, it, 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 I just loved it. And, but I think it was performing and working hard at something and achieving yeah. accolades and that love, yeah. even if it was just family members yeah. that transcended over to when I heard rap. I then started rapping in the playground. I'd, I'd study like, you know, back then it would be Fresh Prince and people like that. Do you know what I mean? Study their raps and then spit them in the playground. But then I thought, all right, if people want to hear these raps. I keep getting people coming up to me, kids in the playground. Oh, can you spit a rap? Can you bust a bar? And, it, and, I, and I thought, well, all right, 20p. Yeah, yeah. No, really? <laughs> I started, really? <laughs> I started, I'll do it for 20p, innit? Yeah, I want some Gary V shit. Bro, that's honestly, honestly. And then, it, then I got it up to 50p. Stop so I was, so I, was, I, was, I was hustling through bars from a young age, man. Back then, it used to buy penny sweets and that, but like... <laughs> no, I'm not even but, but then, it got, as, it, as wow. it built up and I got older and I was saving all my money to buy records, then that money would go to like, if mm. I was going to go up to town, because I'd, I'd go up to London, to Victoria, to go to like the spots, man, your black markets and uptowns and obviously your deal reels. How old were you at that time? <sighs> this was probably when I was at uni, man. So I was about 19, 20, yeah. that sort of age. Yeah, you know what I mean? Me, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that was a good era still. But you were definitely doing it at the age, what, of 11, 12? Oh, yeah, man. I was... in, the, in the playgrounds? Oh, yeah, definitely. That was like school days, man. All through yeah, school that's days. really unique, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Def and I would, every, every school concert, man, I'd have to be on that. You know, showing like, so I yeah. did one mad one, the hip hop heads will love this. I did like, I did a couple of cover versions in it. So I think we did Jump Around because it was a big tune. I knew, I knew the kids would love it. So I did Jump Around. <laughs> and then I, uh, and then I did um, Slam by Onyx. Oh, yeah. And I remember tipping my hat off and I had a f serious barlid, like the really? bolded, like the Onyx guys. Yeah, man. If you remember, they, that was their look, and it? it was the Shaven look head, like, and my, I remember my headmaster going, you got to grow their hair back, you know? <laughs> With you, man. <laughs> it was specs, bro. Really? Yeah. Uh, that was a, that was actually an era-defining look, wasn't it? That, oh, yeah. The whole Onyx thing. Yeah, the bald head thing, man. Yeah. It was crazy. The crazy kind of almost like industrial outfit. It was just yeah, yeah. Early dready kind of wear almost. Yeah, nah, it? exactly, man. But yeah, but that, I mean, it shows you like from, from literally from inception to like, you know, like doing the, the, the impressions and then the music and then just constant music, 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 that drive. You see how it makes you tick, honestly, man. Music, I can't be without music. I listen to music the whole way up here. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Shout out to Michael Parkinson. I was listening to some of his new yeah, beats he sent Michael, me. Yeah. Big respect for that guy, you know what I mean? And Huli, all the gang. Mm. And so up there, so I'm, I'm taking these beats and I'm vibing and I'm thinking about what I could do on this mm. beat and that beat. And then if, if it's not that, I've got a list, bro. You should see my list, man. I'm going to show <laughs> you. This is like, I have a list of new music that I need to check. And nice. also like, I go back and study catalogs, man. Do you know what I'm saying as well? So like, that is like the stuff I need to oh, listen yeah. to. So you see, there's, a, there's Pete Rock, Flip Tricks, Mickey Fax, Ed OG, you know what I mean? Data Soul. There's, there's, I just go back and study classic catalogs as well because there's always hidden gems in there that you might have missed yeah. when you first caught it, man. So I'm a, I'm a music junkie, bro, 100%. You said study. You're a study. <laughs> I feel that. I feel that when... I feel that when I see you right in the studio. Again, I'm fucking privy. You know what I mean? Like... I've seen you turn around bars within the space of 20 minutes, you know, 16 bars. You have, to have this, let's go. And, and, <laughs> and this is testament to how fucking dope you are, right? Because it is Flowers Day for you, my friend. Oh, okay. I, have seen, I have seen you spitting bar, using your phone, going through the <laughs> notes, and I've seen the phone accidentally, you know, screen lock. Right, yeah. And you still type in your number while spitting the bar yeah, that yeah, you're yeah. reading. Like, I don't yeah, even know man. how you go about that <laughs> <laughs> Bro, it's, like I say, everything is built on vibes with me, man. When it's like, and I think being around, this is another thing that goes back to SASS and also relates to Roadblock and Mike Masters, being around other talented people mm. brings the best out in me. I love being around other talented people in the room. Do you know what I'm saying? Some mm. people, they, they're more like, a, they like a solo vibe. I mm. like to collaborate with people. I like to get people's thoughts, man. I don't even mind constructive criticism. Mm. I'm good with that. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Hating's one thing, but constructive, even on, even on comments, like if someone music video comes out and someone says something that's constructive, that they mm. didn't really like this because X, Y, Z, I'm don't cool with it. that. Yeah. I'm with that, man, because that's how you learn, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And we're all still learning all the time. You can be, you feel you're a master at your trade, but you've always got something else you can learn. It seems to me like you've always got a uh, conveyor belt of music that you're yeah. rolling out as well. Yeah. Like you're always in the studio. Yeah, man. I mean, how many, on average, just on balance, just for the 
for the youngers out there that are doing their thing, you know, no doubt they're watching. Like, how many, how much is in the stockpile? <sighs> a lot, man, a lot. But I usually always try and get the best bits out. If it doesn't come out, it's because it's not quite there. Mm -hmm. It's not, my standards are pretty high, man. I'm like that with beats as well. I'm really picky with beats yeah, and stuff yeah. like that. But I think that's a good thing, man. Do you know what I'm saying? And um, there is stuff that will never come out because I just think that my, that was my level then. It's all right. I can do it better now. Do you know what I'm saying? All right. So, okay. So, let's throw it out there. If there was a thing that's in your armory right now, a song that's in your armory right now that didn't come out for whatever reason at the time, but now you're looking back, it could be like a banging feature, one of the best producers that you've worked with. But for some reason, just come mm. in, give me, give me one of that. Give me one, a song that you're like, yeah, hey, like should have come out and it had X, Y, Z on it. Or I've got them. I've got them in there. They're, 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 they're in the stash, man. There's, really? There's some, you met Urban Dub. There's like, mm -hmm. there's, uh, there's about three tunes with Urban Dub that are still yet to see the light of day. We zoned in and we was going to do an EP. And it never come out. We got we got three tracks there, and trust me, man. I actually listened to one of them on the way up here, and I'm like, wow, this will come out. Yeah, this dope. will come out, even though it's a year and a half old. There's oh, do you know there's I'm on an exclusive right now, right? This this is an exclusive. This made me think now. The old, cog, old cogs are turning. <laughs> 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 there, I've got a track produced by the Brooks Brothers, Ooh. yeah, who are just like in terms mm -hmm. of that more musical drum and bass sound. Big big fan of what they do. Have mm -hmm. been for years. Um, and it's got example on the hook. Stop it. Example on Big the hook. Del. Come on. You know what I mean? <gasps> and it's it's one of them tunes. I think it was Friction. When I played it to Friction, Friction was like, this deserves to come out in a big way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Does it that overpower right... the idea though when it, when someone says that? Is that pressure? Does it? Because it, it's it quite a lot, isn't it? It does put a bit of pressure on the tune, which is probably why it's still there. Yeah. Because when you, I mean, example, we, like, we're all cool with him. That's, that's our bridge, mm -hmm. isn't it? Like, I talked to example about Big Pun and shit. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like he's a hip hop hit. He's a real deal, yeah. Real deal guy. Do you know what I mean? But he's also a superstar. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> to get, <laughs> and I've done, I've done yep. three tunes. I think this will be my third tune I've done with him. I've done a tune that Crafty Cuts did. Big Big up Crafty. Yeah, shout out to Crafty. Big up Urban Dub as well. Yeah, he's on the production oh, on yeah. that. Um, it's me, Dynamite, and Example. Oh, and Example directed the video and everything the else. You can go and check that. And then I did a track for his album that came out during lockdown with P Money. Yeah, so he was, he, was, he was saying to me, ah, oh, it's time for me to return the favour. And like, I just thought, you know, Example, I want an Example hook. Mm -hmm. Because... He can do hooks I can't do, bro. I'm not that 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 the melody he can do and what Great he can, mel oh, amazing. Always, and that's yeah. what he did. And that's that's why that tune is not out yet because it is a bit more pressure. It mm. is example on it. It is a big record mm. that you don't just wanna. And it's timeless as well. That's another mm. thing. Oh, you know good. some so, you know some songs are like you have to get them out because mm. it's a wave. Mm. It's what's going on right mm. now. This is timeless, so it will come out. Um, I think it has to just be on the right platform, man. Do you know what I mean? Interesting you say that because. You're right. If if you throw something like that, that so that could potentially be so seismic, you're actually in, in social media world. You're actually in competition with everything else that's out there that's been done by that person because yeah. it's yeah. all it's all strategy. You understand? Yeah, man. Um, when it comes to strategy, our, our Harry's been no fool when it when it comes to the virality of such things as jumping on a tube. <laughs> Oh yeah, man! In a rave, <laughs> that was crazy. Let's just go through this. So, for those of you who haven't seen it, um, there's we'll talk about the DJs in a second. But Harry's sitting there uh, on the tube, a packed tube. Must have been easily around four o'clock in the afternoon or something there. On early evening, yeah. Yeah, that's it. So uh, you know, ready for war. He's there sitting there with a the newspaper as if he's not doing anything. And yeah. then suddenly, ambush jumps out, grabs the mic. All the lights come on. The DJs are spinning. The sound systems come from somewhere, <laughs> and the whole of the carriage is dancing by then until the until the police come. Yeah, it was that was crazy. Like basically, I know um, some of the guys from Troll Station. Yeah, one of the guys um, actually goes to my gym. Okay, and he come up to me and he like, "Do you want to do a prank with us?" And I was like, "Well, will I get arrested?" He goes, "You might." <laughs> but I've got it'll only be one night in wow. the cells. And I was going like, "Oh yeah, I've never, I've never been in a cell <laughs> for one night. I'll be first, <laughs> isn't it? Like, I'm gonna get home in the morning, sweet." But um, he said you <laughs> might do because my whole thing is I want to do the first illegal rave on the London Underground. So I was like, yeah, let's make it happen, Oh, man. bro, it's such an easy shot for Let's them. make it happen. Get on there and do it. It's so beautiful. Well, these, right. these guys were right. masters of what they did, man. They yeah. literally got on there. We got on Elephant and Castle on the Bakerloo line, and they very quickly masked up the windows, got the lights up, got the sound system running. They got it down in the... They, they worked so quick, man. Okay, Disco boy. No, 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 no. This is really important information. Yeah. So, that, right, so if you were to time it, so they left, which is a great spot to start. Start yeah. at Elephant and Castle. Yeah. So... At, to, until the next stop, they were doing, they were putting... setting it up. Literally, by the next stop, they had it all there. Because he, he he had set it up at home, like in a rack 
all ready to go. That disco boy he knows what he's doing, man. Do you know oh. what I'm saying? And they've done things like this before. They've done, I think they've done something with Better Ripper, RIP, on the London Eye. Yeah, so they, so they, they definitely, you know, they know how to do these kind of, um, we used the word earlier, man, disruptive kind of yeah. marketing things yeah. and that. But it's not really marketing with them. They just love causing havoc. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know really, I mean? they're just trouble and, and pushing pretty much, which is why a lot of them have, you know, been up in front of a judge before and all sorts of stuff because they just love it. They push it to the limits, man. So shout out to them guys. But so This must have been a consideration for you, Wingana, because you all this intel, them being on, you know, in trouble for things in the past. Yeah. And then there's, you're really fronting it. You're going up and grabbing I'm, the I'm on the mic. Yeah. So yeah, it was definitely me fronting it. But do you know what the greatest thing was? As soon as people started to get on, they embraced it. And we didn't know who was getting on. Mm. We could have had someone get on who was like, turn that down, mm. or just some guys who wasn't feeling it at all. And it could have been a whole different energy <laughs> on that train. But people who got on started dancing, they was loving it. Even the police, bro, right? They, ca they came on and they was like, they like, they was cool. Do you know what I mean? They was cool. They goes, we have to shut this down now, guys. But you know what I mean? And they said to us like, you're gonna have to go home with all your equipment as well. If you do get back on and try again, then, we yeah. will have to yeah do what we have to do. But they was cool. And they even, they, they, I think the, what the police did was quite interesting. They even tweeted about it. Stop it. Yeah, I think that what they was trying to do was trying to get a little bit of cred off it. Because oh, they was wow. like, we, we've just shut down the first ever drum and bass rave on the Bakerloo line. Um, no more please guys sort of like a jokey kind of tweet about it did they hashtag you did they add you in I think I don't remember doesn't but, matter but, doesn't, but doesn't they, they did they actually did a tweet about it the That's Metropolitan incredible. Police because I think I think they're trying to show people we're not all bad you know yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we can get down we can get yeah. down <laughs> Yo, that is incredible. Yeah. If you see it, it's it's online. You can check it. That for me, arguably, was like one of the most. Th this was a stand. This was a. Mm, this was a spike mm. in an ever inclining Harry Shotter movement that that has really been the the slow burn of foundation building mm. and giving double to get back and just constantly, yeah, just building really. Building something. Of a yeah, I mean, I I used, I used the phrase. I was trying to move the needle, man. I'm, all, mm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not the sort of person that just. Ah, oh, it's good here, man. Put mm. my feet up, kick mm. back. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. I'm, I'm. You know, I'm doing okay with these live shows and mm. everything else. I'm always like, now, nah, what's the next thing? What's the next wave? What's the next kind of thing mm. that can showcase my skills to an even bigger audience? Mm. So whether that was the Eminem thing, the animal thing. Hold or... on, wait. Eminem thing. <laughs> you, 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 you prevented me having to segue anyway. <laughs> let's, let's get into the Eminem thing. Yeah, yeah, the Eminem thing, man. I don't think we actually touched on it last time. It was no. literally, okay, so this is how it happened. Me and Fantasy, we did, we was doing a thing called the Harry Shotter Show. We might actually be bringing that back as well soon. Big dumb. But um, yeah, so what we do with the Harry Shotter Show is would be me and Fantasy would actually put the set together, put the set together together. So like we had this idea of taking Eminem's Rap God, which was the big tune at the time. We'd play a section of Eminem rapping, then we'd cut to an instrumental, then I'd go even faster, then we'd cut to M and I'd go even faster. So we did it at Westfest. And the response was crazy, bro. I remember the crowd just going mad. You know what I mean? Because it was like Eminem's, you know, he rapped so fast and actually, and then I was trying to take it even further. On the Monday, I said to Fantasy, we need to make our own original song that's in that sort of vibe. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That we can perform on the Harry Shot show. So he got together with um, Dextone, RIP Dextone, man. So many lost soldiers, man. Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? But Dextone co-produced the Animal Record with Fantasy. He sent it to me and I had a brainwave while I was writing the bars. I was like, right, I've gone back to this rap god thing now. I'm thinking, imagine if... I could actually beat his record because he had the world record on that song for most words in a song because it was such that so was crazy double time he was doing on that. So I thought, imagine if I could actually beat it. So fantasy, um, make that record a bit longer, put it the same like, length as Rap God, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna see what happens. So I just wrote the bars yeah. and I highlighted them at the end like you do, and I said, right, I've actually written more words than Eminem. So technically, I've beaten his record. And then we was like, right, this is this is actually quite a good little thing for the culture. It's fun, do you know yeah. what I mean? It's not a diss on M. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just upping the levels and pushing the music forward and also pushing the double time thing mm -hmm. forward, which, you know, me and Skibs and the guys have been pioneering for years over here. So we got the record. The record sounded mad. I remember playing it to Harvey from So Solid, man. He was in the insane. studio that day. And he was just like, this is insane. I goes, I got something here, and it, Harvey? And he's like, yeah, you got something, man. And then I took it to Jamal Edwards. Ooh, took it to Jamal, man. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, man. Jamal did so much for me back in the day, man. If we just briefly mm. let you know about yeah. that, man. Like, you know, when he when he saw what I was doing, he hollered at me, he got me on a warm-up session, and then he was like, you need to be doing more, more music videos. And I was like, yeah, man, but them times the funds weren't great. Do you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So, And he even paid for my music videos for a few videos wow. that I did and put them on the channel and, wow. and hosted my mixtapes on SBTV. And he really helped bridge me from the drum and bass back into the That's rap and fantastic. the grind stuff. So, yeah, man, forever love him for that. Do you know what I'm saying? Jamal, yeah. Sterling soldier, man. Definitely. So when I got this, I was like, I'm going to take it to Jamal. 
because he's the plug, man. Do you know what I mean? He, SBTV was the spot. So I took it to him and he absolutely loved it. And he straight away, he got um, Lex to do the video, a director called Lex. And he was, uh, he's, he does a lot of Santan Dave's videos now. So he's really grown into like a big director. But this wow. was early doors for him. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? We had a great concept for the video, running around up in forest in a straight jacket, animal let loose and all that. <laughs> video comes out and it does 50,000 in the first week, which I was, I was pleased with. It is buzzing, yeah. But then we do an interview with UKF. That time, dubstep's <laughs> huge, right? So all the Americans are on this UKF site. The story blows up, man. Funkmaster Flex starts tweeting about it. Waka Flocker starts tweeting about it. Even T-Pain did a Facebook post on it. The Breakfast Club are talking about it. The record does like a million plays in like the next five days. It goes Whoa. extremely viral. Do you know what I'm saying? It, it was everywhere. And then it, that led on, shout out to Dave, because he was onto Guinness. Because Guinness at first, they was a little bit, I don't think they wanted to let Eminem's record go because it's quite cool to have Eminem in the Guinness Book of World yeah, Records. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, but they, they, they was sort of finding a way to like log it out. But Dave was persistent, man. He was on the phone to them, talking to his contact there the whole time to push it through. And in the end, it, it got so much heat on it. People were talking about it so much. It's all over the internet. They had to give me the record, man the world record do you know what I'm saying they had to do it and it still I'm stands to this day <laughs> it still stands world record we're dealing <laughs> in world record holders in here say your normal fucking conversation tell him Kels. fuck yeah that's fantastic <laughs> yeah man but that's just another example of like just doing something out the box something disruptive something crazy you know what I mean that's what I'm always about man fearless pushing the envelope trying to do some groundbreaking shit because it's fun man testing yourself isn't it challenging yeah. you. that's what I'm all about yeah, yeah, yeah. challenging myself not never getting too comfortable. I don't, I don't work well when I'm too comfortable and things are going too well. I like to have a bit of fire in yeah. the belly and a, a reason and yeah. something to go at. Do you know what I'm saying? This energy like, here is all the time, by the way. <laughs> it's not, this isn't like a thing. This is the real deal. What do you fear? Fear, wow. That is a great question, man. Uh, I guess I fear... But honestly. Yeah, let me, let, let me, let me take a sec fear? to think about this. Uh, the biggest fear musically would be to pick up that pen, although I do write bars on my phone now, so mm -hmm. that's just an analogy, but, um, and just that, that thing I have, that love and passion and that ability I have to be gone, almost, almost choking, like on, you know, some rappers have choked on stage, mm -hmm. battle rapping and all that, um, that thing of not being able to do what I love. Do you know what it killed me, bro? Mo Bit of Blues, have you seen that film? No. It's a Spike Lee film, yeah, Denzel Washington. Get it. And um, I'm not gonna break down the whole story, but in the end, he loves jazz so much. He loves jazz like I love rap. He's on this shit, man. Do you know what I mean? He's on it. He's, he's just his passion, his life, everything else. He gets into some, some crazy shit. His mouth gets bust up with a horn. He goes to perform with his old crew. He just can't perform no more. All the notes are dud and it's like, it's so tragic, man. It's like everything, everything he was is gone. Mm. But he does find light through family. So there is a happy end to the story. But... That what, what made him who he was, what, you know, he was taught jazz from a musician in the film, sorry, from a youngster in the film and everything else. He was taught it from day one. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So everything he was was suddenly gone. And it's just like, that is a fear. That is a fear I have. It's not something that I wake up every day and think, well, imagine if I can't do this anymore. But that would be something that would, would scare me. Is that a nightmare? Do you dream about that? No, I've never dreamt about it. No. I've dreamt about that with my... With really? This, yeah, with just one particular snare. It's really <laughs> fucking weird. It's just, it's, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. as you do. Um, that's interesting. Mm. Personal fears? Personal would be, you know, like literally, I've got a really good family, man. So for, for that to, to that to be gone, like to, for, for, for me to do something or for something. to I, My fear with being a dad, I used to have a fear about being a dad for not being good enough, mm. for not being able to Provide. give that child what it needs emotionally and everything else. And I had a real, we're getting deep now, but I had a real guilt trip when he was first born, when I would have to go away and do shows. Mm. And I think that comes from when I was young, I, was, I felt that I was alone a lot of the time. I didn't mm. feel I was taken up for, I went through a bit of a mad childhood and stuff. So I kind of was putting myself in that position and thinking of me, like I, I, I held my standards so high and I was thinking, could I be the dad and the father that I want to be? Do you know what I'm mm. saying? And for years I feared just through me doing something stupid or me, but me like, you know what I mean? Not having what it takes to be that father. Cause I just hold that thing of being a dad in such high regard. It's such a important responsibility when you've got a life to take mm. care of and also teach and, and guide in the right way. Do you know what mm. I mean? That would be a personal fear that I definitely had that I couldn't provide everything I want to provide to make that child flourish. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So, so to me being a dad was a big thing. It's the same as getting married. I'm a married man. 
I, I wanted to do that when I was fully ready to commit and, mm. and you know, and just to just give the rest of my life to that person. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so, and it, 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 you know, as a man, we do get scared of commitment and it's for life. And, yeah. you know, we have these issues. But when I knew for sure, that's when, because people were saying to me for years, man, you've been together for years. And I, and I was like, we was in a great relationship, but it was like, I had to be like, absolutely and that's what I'm like. I have to be fully involved, fully intensely know that I can commit to that level and give you everything you need. Mm, do you know what I'm saying? So yes, it's, I'm sure there's loads of people out there that relate. Comment below, tell the stories. Yeah, yeah man. Um, yeah, there is that, isn't there? Yeah. I think there's an actual added weight, the fact that the self-employed life, especially as an MC or an artist, yeah. is really fraught. Yeah, yeah, man. Because it's, it's, it's the music industry's fickle as well. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's very fickle. You've got to like... I'm, a, I'm I, you know, you, you mentioned about it earlier, but I, you know, I, I do study the strategic business side of the industry as well. This is my profession. This is what I, you know, I don't get up and have a suitcase and go to work, but I do in my own field. Mm. I was trying to say that to someone the other day. It's like, we don't just rap on Friday and Saturday nights in drum and bass clubs. There's meetings in the week. Mm. There's strategic phone calls with mm. the agent. There's like studio and creative time. There's promo. Mm. Do you know what I mean? There's, deep, there, there's the social media stuff. Mm. There's, there's hours and hours that go into making a successful artist. It isn't just that hour on stage. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Even getting to that stage. I'm, you know, I'm, I've done three gigs a night before four sometimes. And imagine all the traveling and, and the yeah, planning that goes into making those shows work. bass MCs do it different. That's all I'll say. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you guys do it differently. Yeah. You do it very differently. Um, yeah, it's a tough one because um, not every girlfriend or boyfriend really is hard. For, sometimes it can be quite hard for them to relate. And it's not like you're trying to ring dodge or anything. Mm. You're just, you just, it's just this... I guess it's a self-assurance that you know that, yes, okay, everything's right mm. because it could easily go wrong. Mm, mm, mm. Definitely, man. Mm. Yeah, yeah, 100%, man. That's why you have to be on your job, man. Yeah. Really, it is, it, is, it is a full-time thing doing this music thing, man, especially independently as well. Mm. You know, I'm lucky I've got a great team. I've got Dave, you know, really yeah, well. And I've, got, I've, got, I've got certain people that I've been around for years, like trusted engineers mm. and people like that. And just even, even down to the people I roll with on the road, man, the drivers mm. that, that are just so on point and get me to these spots safely and on mm. time and, you know, they're not turning up in a madness or drinking or mm. anything you know what I mean they're just, mm. they're just good guys that have helped me like kind of there's so many people that help an artist mm. kind of thrive it isn't you know you, your mentality as an artist is really important how you deal with people and everything else but those people around you mm. you know you can't do it without them man it's true you can't do it without them that, that, that sort of network of people of trusted individuals that help you to thrive and succeed man mm. it's so important I can't stress I can't stress to people like and, and I know a lot of people will know all the uh all the peers, such as you know Rodney, the Rodney Pease and Ty, rest in peace, and, mm. um, and Son of Noise, you know these original iconic Blade. UK hip hoppers, Blade, Scheme, Fuck, Scheme. There's, there's loads, man. Fallacy. They all know you as the hardest working MC of our generation. I can't emphasise it enough. You are the fucking best out there. That's end of it. It's the truth. <laughs> it's the fucking truth. Yeah, appreciate the love, man. It's do you true. know what I'm saying? World but that, record but that, that is for that is for people to say. I never say it, man. Do you know what I mean? Because I'm I'm such a fan of the game, innit? I'm just always striving to be better the next day. All the peers but, that I just mentioned there will totally and utterly vouch for the fact that they've seen and we've seen and you have been so silent yet critical about you it's been a game of chess for you <laughs> from inception of you being an MC right across mm. to now you've been so consistent and methodical patient and it's just like phew, yeah doing it now bro yeah 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 you know it's, it's 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 a blessing man every time I get on a stage I'm, I just feel blessed every time a record comes out and you watch the reaction I just feel blessed man I, I just and I just give thanks for it bro you know what I'm saying mm. I'm very thankful to be able to have a career in music mm. you know some people they have good two years they come out they have a couple of hits and it don't really work they get, they get dropped mm. by the label like I said I've been you know doing this music thing from from literally all through school and luckily Life. it paid yeah. you know it, it it kept the lights on all through after that as well mm. up until now do you know what I'm saying so I feel very blessed for that I feel thankful for that and that's the kind of energy I try and put out as well mm. I mm. never try and put out negative energy man even though some, some we are human mm. I will have a little negative tweet a little moan every now and again because we are human and I don't want to be seen <laughs> as, the football as a robot <laughs> <laughs> if anyone 
a fan of football, you know where you know, we stand. You know, I, love, you know, I right love the Gooners, man. <laughs> Arsenal gang all day, man. But yeah, that just makes us human, man. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? No yeah, one yeah. is perfect and everyone like... But in general, I like to put out the positive vibes, mm. man. Do you know what I'm saying? And then I've found that you do get them back tenfold that, if you put out those vibes. You Isn't know what I mean? Isn't it only the lucky ones that consider that? Trust that's me. actually a universal factor. For, do, the, do the Googling, you know what time it is. Trust me. You go out gymming a lot as well, don't you? You run and you train and you yeah. kill every day on that. Yeah, man. I think just like when you when you get in like there was a time when I put on a few too many pounds, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? It's sometimes this life. Sort of sweets in the playground, <laughs> I mean, battle rapping. You know what I mean? Like, come on, you know son. What it actually was. It, was. it was mainly through doing like live a lot of live stuff on the road, and you just eat rubbish. Yeah, you do. You yeah. eat rubbish, and when you're not thinking about it. Mm -hmm. You just eat, you just stop at this McDonald's, Burger King, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're, you're yeah. consuming this sort of junk food and at weird hours of the night. And then, do you know what yeah. I'm saying? And yeah. then, you know, I like a drink as well. So I'd be drinking on top. Mm. And like, as the years have gone on, I've sort of realized that, you know, a vodka's better or a gin's better for the belly. Do you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? But back then, I'm a straight beer man, isn't it? So mm -hmm. I'm drinking all these Stellas and yeah. super teas. And it's like. You don't realize. <laughs> and, and, yeah. and you're piling on the pounds. And I was like, no, nah, I've got to do something about this. But then when I got into the gym thing, and I started with gym. I didn't start with running. I got into the gym thing. I absolutely loved it. I loved improving the strength because it's another challenge. You yeah. know what I mean? See, and there's when a I, pattern developing. Yeah, yeah. there's a <laughs> pattern. And when, it, when I started to like jump on the scales and be like, oh, I've lost four pounds this week. I love this. Mm. It, it's, it's, it inspired me to just keep on that journey and keep gymming it, man. And you got the gym just down the road from where you were. Yeah, you've seen it, bro. It's like literally 24 hours, yeah. man. I love it. Literally, you don't even need to shower when he comes out. You just run back, <laughs> back up the hill. It's done. But running, that was through lockdown because obviously the gym shut. So I couldn't go gym and I was like, oh, how am I going to feed that? Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Because it's something kind of, it's, it's, something like gym becomes habit. Yeah. You have to go. You, you know, it's just to. become, it's part of you. I'm going straight after this. I'm going to the gym. Do you know what I'm saying? To get it in because I couldn't For get it in this talk. morning. Just facts, brothers. I mean, I did it the other day, didn't I? When we, right. done, we done Saturday nights. Oh, I got a, you had a couple of drinks. I was like, yeah, yeah. no, I better go and do the gym. Yeah, but, but no, there's <laughs> nothing that did, 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 derails that. You no. are on it. Yeah. So when that was sort of taken away through COVID, I was like, I've got to do something. Running is all you can really do. Mm. So the first time I did it, bro, I had a stitch. I was like, I done about, I think I done four kilometers. You know, I was, I was you thought hurt. you were fit, and then you did a run. Mate, I was it? hurt. For it's real. different. Yeah. It's different because I was all into weight training, man. And like, you know, I jump on a treadmill now and again to mm. balance it out. But mm. I wasn't doing like four kilometers. Sorry, about four kilometers or nothing like that. And then I done it a few more times, and then I, be, I loved it. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I started to realize I could run even further. My, my, my record's like twenty-two kilometers, man. That's like half a marathon. Fuck's sake. Do you know what I'm saying? And, and like, even the other day, I've done 11 kilometers and I just, I just love it. I just zone out with music again. Oh, I, I think about things. It's like, when I'm running, I don't, you know, like people talk about meditating. Yeah. I don't meditate in the traditional sense, but when I'm running, I'm, my, it's my brain's going like You're this, man. Zone. I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm either taking in music or I'm off on some tangent where I'm just thinking about like life and what to do next and where I want to take this thing and all that. It's like, to, it's almost like meditating whilst moving. God, that's good. And, and you get it when <laughs> if you're doing it in the morning or any particular part of the day that suits you, you mm. really do, you miss it when it's gone. Yeah, trust me, man. Trust me, man. So yeah, all these things are just like key to like mental health and you know, sustainability mm. as an artist and as a human being, man. You know what I mean? Mike Masters. Yeah, we need to talk about another Mike exercise Masters. in itself. So there's another exercise in itself. Like, yeah. There's a call to arms in it, in my mind. I mm. can't wait for it. I'm looking forward to it. Mm. But the whole idea of you bringing the new generation... You know, it is actually, they spare no bones. Mm. Some people out there don't like the MC culture. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? Art? <laughs> Seriously, though, isn't it? It's like they don't want the MCs there or, well, or they're not getting paid the same amount well, as the DJ. Um, What's that? Yeah, well, I think, I think you know, in, say hip hop has always been quite MC up the front, same as grime, mm. you know, and I've heard um, rumours in the grime scene that producers and DJs don't really get their credit as much as the MCs are at the front. Right. Whereas in drum and bass, it was kind of built to me, off sound system culture originally. Mm. So it was, you know, the DJ and the MC linking up. Over time, it did become more of a producer-led scene. Mm. And some people preferred the music without the MC in, which is fair enough. Everyone has a right to, to a preference, do you know what I'm saying? Mm. But I think there's been an influx of more and more events with no MCs, mm. or do you know what I mean? Just certain guys who are more hosting and not actually, actually saying any lyrics. Mm -hmm. Which, again, is fine. We can all coexist. Yeah, yeah. But what Mike Masters is about is readdressing the balance because I think the music's essence and where it comes from and the culture should always be preserved. It's like, we go back to hip-hop, you know, there's, 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 
That's what's kept it going so long. Mm. And even to this day, people say hip hop's not like it used to be. You just got to dig deeper. Dig deeper. They, they, there were great artists doing great mm. things in hip hop. You know, all the way from your RJ Payne's to Ransom to what Griselda are doing, and that's just a few yeah. names. I could I could be here all day with that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But there are great artists doing great things, and that's because it's preserving the essence and the culture of the music. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm. And drum and bass at the same time needs to do that because what's happened with drum and bass, and this is great, it's basically almost becoming pop music at the moment. Yeah, that's right. right. So that's cool. We're getting a lot of drum and bass songs in the charts. Mm -hmm. We're getting drum and bass DJs now becoming more like personalities, more like sort of a house DJ, mm -hmm. which yet again is cool. But you can't eradicate the MC side no. of it. You can't replace the MC DJ combo no. that this shit was built on mm -hmm. with that. We can coexist. Mm -hmm. For people that want that, that's cool, man. Do that. But it shouldn't be at the uh, the sort of detriment. the sake of the detriment, yeah, mm -hmm. of the M of the classic MC. DJ combination. We're losing such a huge part of the it, culture. It's to me, that's that's what drew me in and that's what yeah. drew so many people in. When I went to Jungle Fever, when I was of age to go, at Astoria, and I saw Skibber Shabba, and it was Debt, I think, as well, and Fearless, the way those UK MCs had that crowd mm. going in a frenzy, Ugh. I've never seen a UK MC do that before. Mm. And that was so special because before I'd go to hip-hop shows and there might be a UK act warming up, but the hip-hop crowd back then were very much not trying to show love to British nah. MCs. Anything, they'd be they'd yawning. Just, yeah. They'd be just standing there. Arms it was a real crossed. snobbery, man. Even yeah. if the guys were good. Yeah. There was a real snobbery for the UK hip hop. But when 100%. I went to drum and bass, the jungle, they loved it. Mm. They had like 3,000 people screaming, deal, it don't matter, deal. And I was God, like... that's good. And it's just incredible. That, yeah. that feeling yeah. of drum... And that's what I say about drum and bass. You know, you know how much I love my hip hop, but drum and bass, the energy in the music. Yeah. When an MC drops, when I see three drops on a, you know, the right tune, when a Mosey or whoever else brings it in. Forget it. Come on, man. <laughs> that, that, that needs to be preserved, yeah. celebrated yeah. and held up in high regard. Because yeah. what the top echelon of drum and bass MCs do you know, is, is phenomenal, man. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? The speed, the clarity. You know, I've had, I've had, there's been hip hop MCs come and try and do drum and bass and they realise there's a lot to learn. Yeah. Even me when I came in. Yeah. It's like voice projection. You're sometimes going, competing against a, a mix. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's so much harder to get your voice heard in drum and bass. There's no sound checks. Uh, no, 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 you turn no, 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 up, no. you bust up the mic and then you have to talk to the engineer to maybe turn it up or put some tops depending on what your vocal's like. But you've got to be ready. you just got to be knowing what the, the your own... Um, gauge of sound is when you walk on those things and what, exactly that's tough isn't it and it's also known what I had to learn as well even though I was a fan of drum and bass and I was going out raving I was I was raving from a purely consumer's perspective just enjoying the music just loving Mampy and Skib or whoever mm -hmm. I was listening to or Andy C or whoever that night when I got into the scene I realised that oh some DJs play very differently mm -hmm. so one DJ I can rinse out bars other DJs I'm going to have to let the mixes ride because what they're doing they're absolutely Mampy Swift's a good example. What he does with music with two records or maybe even three records is genius. The way he blends because I can beat mix, right? But I can't do what Mampy does. Do you know what I mean? I can't do what Andy C does, friction, all these guys. What they do when they put together certain sounds, they're creating a whole new song out of two or three other records. That's fucking sick. And yeah. and what you have to do as an MC and what I learned, if I'm with Mampy Swift, let that beautiful thing breathe, mm -hmm. man. Don't spit a bar on it. It's gonna. It will ruin it. Mm. And and that and that's what MCs have been accused of over the years. It's not 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 the top guys. You know, mm. not your X Man, Evil B. None of these guys. I'm talking about sort of people that just you know might do the first set of the night. Mm. You know, they, they talk over they talk over the breakdowns. They they talk over they they try and MC over vocals sometimes. Yeah. All these sort of things. You're talking about prospects, the exactly. MCs that are just coming into the game. Yes, and this is why. Another reason Mike Masters has been created is to give these MCs somewhere where they can come and learn as well mm. in room free. We see, if we see potential in people, we're putting them straight in that room free and then we're seeing how they get on. Yeah, you know, and, 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 they will, and, and they will learn. And they will learn, man. And there'll be some we'll see and we'll think, right, that guy, that girl, that's a main room artist. Mm. Next time they're getting a main room set. And there'll be some that I will personally call and say, you know, you handled that job. like, and I, I, cause I, I don't mind helping people, mm -hmm. but that's what I'm about. I've been doing workshops for years with young mm -hmm. people. So there's certain people I'll be ringing and saying, yeah, you, next time you need to do this. And there's some people, I've got to be real, there's some people that won't get a call back again mm -hmm. because right now you're not ready mm -hmm. and I'm going to keep an eye on you and I'll bring you in when I feel you're ready to jump on that stage that's again. It. But it's a safe space for them to go because, you know, what happens sometimes now in the streaming era is you might have a big song and suddenly you're getting booked for, um, let's just say, Naz Festival, mm -hmm. which is a huge festival. Yeah. And you might not have the stage mm -hmm. techniques, uh -huh. um, the breath control, um, delivery, all these kind of things that you pick yeah. up through doing club sets and learn along the way. Like I said, I've learned loads myself. Mm -hmm. It's not like I came in and was like, wow, I had loads to learn. And I did learn it through doing club yeah, sets. Yeah, and there's no shortcuts. It's just more like you want to, you don't want those mistakes 
that people, younger people make to be impactful on a on a main stage, like yeah. girls that are paying money and putting big, big festivals on. Exactly, because mm. essentially I want people to say, drum and bass MCs are sick. Yeah, yeah, man, big up Skibba, Harry Shot, Shabba, all the guys. Mm. But big up these youngers coming through. Big up Wiser. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Big up Westman. Big up Wiser. All big these guys. Wiser, these guys are these guys are incredible. I've been yeah. in the studio with them. Their their pen is serious. Mm. They're, mm. they're lyricists, man. Do you know what I mean? There's a guy called Slay. He's sick. There's so many good young drum and bass MCs coming through. There's, it's, it's, it's a plethora. Of, what's the, is it a plethora of talent? Yes. It's my oh. vocab. <laughs> there yeah, There's so much. There's so much talent there that, given the right platform and put out in the right way, they will thrive, man. But mm. they won't just thrive as what I call like club MCs and hosts. They'll become artists, yeah. and that's the next stage of Mic Masters, where the whole concept really is putting the power in the hands of the MCs. So if I ring up my friend Tiny K, who's a wicked MC on the up. And I say, right, you've got 20 minutes. Get your own DJ. Decide how you want to do the set. You might want to PA your own songs. You might want to literally get your DJ to mix all your own songs and only do your own music. You might be an MC that, that, that prefers to spit on liquid, yeah? Because yeah. you, you prefer to rap and keep it a bit slower. You don't want the jump up double time stuff. So you tell your DJ, this is what we want to do on the set. So you tailor make your set and you craft that set to put you in the best light as an MC. Not just turning up and having to do what us guys have had to, to do over the years work, and, yeah. and adjust and all that. You can literally, this is your time to take control of your own destiny and present yourself in the best possible light. And that's, that's what Mike Masters is all about, man. Wow. And it's a rave. It's a rave. It is, it is a, it's still an environment where you can mm. come and party, have a drink. That's yeah. what it's all about. It isn't a stand up, like watching PAs all day and I'm coming on afterwards and everyone clap that night. It's still a rave. I am definitely going to be there. Yeah, Killer Keller will be there, man. Come on, baby. Come on. <laughs> When you start something new, to go in Fabric, which is such an iconic venue, yeah, is a great time. place to start. And there's, you know, there's going to be a lot we learn along the way about how the, the Ravers consume this new concept as well. Because yeah. we want to take it all across the country, man. There's talks with Birmingham and other places. Oh, that as well? There's talks to, there's talks to take it all around the country, man. Yo, this is going to be huge. And, 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 that, and in that case, we'll be looking at who's hot in Birmingham. Mm. We want to get the, the, the hot new kids in Birmingham. And also the legends. We'll, you know, we'll holler bass man, Trigger, Nutcracker, the guys that have been killing it for years yeah. and in them ends. Do you know what I mean? Oh That's what it's God. about. Yeah, it's international, man. See, the future's bright. It keeps it on moving. Honestly, you... We're busy, you're busy. The fact that though, you're literally... I mean, the fact you're even here, because I know how much time you don't have, yeah. it's fucking great, man. Yeah, I pre bruv, I appreciate it, man. Thank it's you so always much. a pleasure to talk to you anyway, man. You mm. know the respect I've had for you for mm. years. Concrete from day one. The amount of times I've said a killer like Keller in my bars over the years. I must have used that about four times. <laughs> yeah, that in itself is a you know sample I mean? worthy of scratching. <laughs> Yo, big old Harry Shot inside the building. Yes, 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 yes. Roadblock. Yes. Roadblock. <laughs> Mike Masters. Legendary world record holder. What do you want to know? What, what do you want to know? Killer Keller podcast out like it was out of fashion. Thanks for tuning in. Sharing is caring. Tell a friend to tell a friend. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither did they. All right? <laughs> don't talk to an I wouldn't people. Nice one, Harry. Big love. Roadblock. Peace. Peace. That was good conversation, man.